Okay, so here's example five with related rates, and uh, just like with all the other examples we've done so far, uh, if you want to get a copy of this, um, you know, check the video description here, and um, you can go to, you'll find a link where you can uh, download this, you could save it, you could print it if you want, uh, and then you can follow along with the video. Um, but anyway, example five, uh, an upside down conical tank full of water has a uh, base radius of three meters and a height of five meters, and the water in the tank is being drained at a rate of two cubic meters per minute. And uh, we want to know what is the rate of change of the height of the water when it, meaning the height, is four meters. Okay. So we read the whole problem, now we go to our general process. Uh, step one, draw and label a picture. So we have uh, an upside down conical tank, so we're just going to draw an upside down cone over here. So we have a cone right here, and it's uh, upside down. Okay. Um, so it has a base radius of three meters. So we say base because it really it's talking about this part, but it's upside down, so it's you know, but it's still the base. So his here is the base, uh, and the radius is three. Okay, so three um, is that distance here. Okay, three, three meters. Um, so we can label the meters too. Anyway, uh, what else is happening here? And a height of five meters. So this whole thing has a height of five meters. Okay, so the height of that upside down conical tank is five meters. Uh, now it's got some water in it, and the water is being drained at a rate of two cubic meters per minute. So uh, this water, so it says the um, the tank is full, but you know we're being uh, asked to find stuff when the uh, when the height of the water is four meters. So we can just draw, you know, the water level will be about here. So make it conical also. So the water level is about here. Um, now the height of the water level, let's call that h, so this distance here is going to be h, so it'll be h. Alright, so um, that's our picture there. Alright, and uh, how about this radius here? So the radius of the water level we can call that r. Okay, so the, uh, the tank itself has radi base radius 3 meters and height 5 meters, and uh, the water level has a height of h meters and the, ra uh, the base radius, so to speak, of the water level is going to be r. All right. So um, this is kind of a goofy setup here, you know, what's really going on? Well, if we extend this to go up here, then we have a right triangle, and here's a right triangle. So if we look at a two-dimensional cross-section, so imagine, you know, take this conical tank and then just take a slice right through the middle. So if we slice it right through the middle like that, um, what are we going to have? Well, we're going to have uh, something like this, okay, if we just look at this this uh, piece over here, right triangle, right triangle, and uh, this, this was h, right, this distance here was h, all right, and uh, this whole thing is 5, right, the whole thing here is 5, so this whole distance uh, is 5, and then this we were calling r, and then this up here is 3, okay, so this all, whole thing is 3. Okay, so again, uh, we have this conical tank here, and we just took a little uh, two-dimensional slice or a cross-section, a uh, little slice of this piece right here, and then that's what we have here. We end up with similar triangles, so that's good, because now we can work with that geometrically uh, later when we have to. All right, so that's, anyway, that's step one, draw and label a picture. Uh, step two, using mathematical notation, make a list of what you're given and what you want to know. So what are we given? Um, you know, we're given a bunch of stuff we already labeled, so we don't have to write it again but also the water is being drained at a rate of two cubic meters per minute. So, right down here, given. Um, so, the water is being drained at a rate of two cubic meters per minute. That means uh, cubic meters per minute, that's a rate of change at the volume, right? So we'll let big V be the volume. So dV dt uh, equals actually negative two uh, cubic meters per minute. Why is it negative? Because the water is being drained out of this, so the water is uh, being drained out of this conical tank here. So if the water is being drained, that means the uh, amount of water is decreasing. So as time goes on, there's less and less water in here, which means uh, the total volume of the water is going to be getting smaller. So V is a decreasing quantity because the volume itself is decreasing. So dV dt should have a negative uh, value. Okay, dV dt should be negative because um, V has a negative rate of change because it's getting smaller. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much all, the only other thing we're given. And then what do we want? Uh, we want to know uh, what is the rate of change of the height of the water when the height is 4 meters. So we want dH dt, because okay, that's the height of the water. So we want the rate of change of the height of the water when 
uh, h equals 4 meters, when the height is 4 meters. Okay, so that's step th uh, 2. Using mathematical notation, make a list of what you're given and what you want to know. Now we go to uh, step 3, write down the relevant equations. And again, they're usually going to be geometric formulas. So here, uh, we're actually going to have two equations to write down. So uh, we're talking about volumes and uh, heights and radii and stuff like that, right? So this is a cone. So what's the volume of the cone? Uh, it's V equals one-third pi r squared h. That's the formula for volume of the cone. Um, and we're talking about volume of the water level. So this r here is the same as this r, okay, the uh, radius of the water in here. And uh, h is the height of the water level. So these two h's are the same. Okay. And this V represents the volume um, of all the water that's currently in the tank. All right, and what else do we have? Well, we have similar triangles here. So, um, you know, we're not, right now it's not clear how we're going to use that, but it's, you know, it might be relevant, so let's go ahead and write it down. So, uh, similar triangles, remember that's a property from geometry. So, what we can say is uh, H divided by 5 equals R divided by 3. All right, so we'll say that. Um, H over 5 equals R over 3. All right, so that's good. Now we have that. Um, okay, now, uh, that was step three, write down the relevant equations, and then step four, implicitly differentiate both sides of the appropriate equation with respect to time. Okay, so here, um, with all the examples we've done so far at this point, you know, we could just take a derivative or we could do like a small manipulation, um, a small algebraic manipulation and then take a derivative. But here, there's going to be one more extra step. Um, what are we doing here? We're given stuff about dv dt, and we want to know stuff about dh dt. So all we, want, all we care about is dh dt. Okay? We don't care anything about the radius, really. Um, so is there some way that we could you know, modify this equation so that r disappears and we only have h? Well, yeah, we can uh, if we use this here. Okay? Because h and r, they're related by this equation over here to each other. So what we can do is solve this equation for r, and then we'll use that expression in this here so that we can express v entirely in terms of h. All right? And why do we want to do that? Uh, again, because at some point, you know, eventually, uh, we want to take a derivative, right? This is step four, implicitly differentiate. And we know dv dt, and we want dh dt when h has a certain value. Okay? So um, what we need to do then is get r out of this equation. Because if we take a derivative now, we're going to have dr dt and dh dt. But we don't want dr dt, so let's get r completely out of there. And we could do that by using this equation. So um, r, you okay, just multiply both sides by 3, and then we get uh, 3h over 5 equals r. So now, um, actually, we can plug this up into here, and we could say, okay, v equals 1 third times pi times r squared. If r is 3h over 5, hey, r is always 3h over 5 because um, of similar triangles from geometry here. Uh, r is always 3h over 5, so then we could say this is 3h over 5 squared, and then times this h still out here. So this is good because now r is completely gone from the volume equation. So let's go ahead and simplify this. Uh, v equals 1 third pi times uh, 3h squared over 5. That's, uh, or, sorry, 3h over 5 quantity squared, sorry. That's uh, 9h squared over 25, and then times this h out here. So then 3 goes into 9 three times. So then we actually have V equals, uh, let's see, what do we have here? 3 pi over 25, and then times H cubed now. OK, so we have 3 on top, of pi is still up there, and then 25 down here. And then H squared times H gives us H cubed. So this is V here, all right? So now that's good. Now we're ready to take a derivative, okay? Because um, now we just have v and h, and that's good because when we take a derivative, we'll just have dv dt and uh, dh dt and some stuff with h too. Okay. So if we come back up here, um, v equals 3 pi over 25 times h cubed. So now we take a derivative uh, of both sides implicitly with respect to t. So dv dt. Um, equals 3 pi over 25, because it's just a constant multiple, so it's still there. And then here, again, this is going to be chain rule stuff, right? Implicitly, uh, when you implicitly differentiate, it's really the chain rule. So h is a function of t, right? h is implicitly a function of t. And then we're going to take that function of t and then cube it. 
So we have a function inside of another function. So the big guy is cubing things, and the little guy is h. Okay, whatever h may be, it's just some function of t. We don't care what it is, we don't know what it is, it doesn't matter, it's just a function of t, and then it's inside of another function here, cubing. So chain rule says uh, derivative of that's going to be derivative of the big guy, and then evaluate it at the little guy. Okay, so derivative of the big guy gives us 3 and squared, and then evaluate it at the little guy, that gives us h, and then multiply by the derivative of the little guy which is dh dt, because we're implicitly differentiating with respect to t. All right? So we have all that there. Um, so now, you know, we have pretty much everything we need. Okay? So that was uh, step four, implicitly differentiate both sides with respect to uh, t. And now step five, plug in the known quantities and solve for the unknown variable. So here, uh, dv dt is negative two, and um, dh dt, that's what we're looking for, and we're looking for it when h is four. So again, um, h, you know, little h, that's not always 4, right? That's not a constant, so we can't plug that in until after we've taken the derivative, which we just did. Okay, so h equals 4, we have to be very careful not to plug that in up here or anything like that, right? Because if we do, then we'll just end up with a constant, and then that'll be bad. But um, h, little h is a variable, okay? The height of the water is changing as time goes on. It's not always 4 meters, right? The height of the tank is always 5 meters, right? But that's actually kind of irrelevant. Um, but the height of the water level, that changes, so we can't plug that in until after we've taken the derivative. All right, so uh, again, now it's safe to do that because we just took the derivative. So dv dt is negative 2, so negative 2 equals 3 pi over 25 times uh, 3, all right. And then uh, h squared, so h is 4 now, so this is going to be 4 squared, which is 16, and then times dh dt. All right, so from here it's really just a bunch of algebra. So, um, you know, what we could do here is say, well, when we combine everything, um, what are we going to have? We're going to have negative 2 equals uh, 9 pi over 25, and then times 16, uh, whatever that may be. I don't have a calculator on me now, uh, times dht. So now um, we want to get dht by itself, so divide by 9 pi times 16, and then multiply both sides by 25. Uh, and then up here we'll have uh, dh dt equals, um, see if we multiply both sides by 25 then what we'll have is negative 50, all right? And then if we divide both sides by 9 pi times 16 then we'll have 9 pi times 16 down here, all right? And then uh, that's going to simplify to um, dh dt equals negative 25 over 72 uh, pi. Okay, so up here, um, there's a common factor of 2, so if we take out a common factor of 2, this will be 25, and this would be 8, and then 9 times 8 gives us 72, and then 25 is 25. And then what are the units? Um, if we go back up to the problem here, it's meters and then per minute. Okay, so uh, the volume, you know, the volume is decreasing at a rate of cubic meters per minute, so uh, dh dt, the height, has to be changing at a rate of, or with units, meters per minute. All right. So that would be our answer here. And then if we wanted to approximate, that would be about equal to uh, negative 0 0.1105 uh, meters per minute. So that's our answer for example 5. And again, you know, think about what does that mean to be negative? Um, that means, you know, if dh dt is negative, the rate of change of h with respect to t uh, is negative, so as t increases, as time goes on, h is decreasing because it has a negative rate of change, okay? So um, does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense, right? The water is draining out of the tank, so the volume of the water, of course, is decreasing, and if the volume is decreasing, then, you know, the height of the water level, of course, that's also decreasing. So as time goes on, more water is draining out of the tank, so uh, h is getting smaller and smaller, so the height of the water is decreasing. So it makes sense that dh dt would be negative. And uh, that's the answer for example 5. And if we wanted to express that uh, in words, uh, again, I'm out of room here, but if you want to write that down in words in English, uh, what is the rate of change of the height of the water when it, the height is uh, 4 meters? And we could say, well, when the height is 4 meters, um, it's decreasing at a rate of 25 over 72 pi meters per minute. So again, um, when we answer it in English, we don't use the minus sign, right? Because we use the word decreasing, which implies it's negative. So uh, we say, you know, the height of the water is decreasing, and how quickly is it decreasing? Well, it's decreasing at a rate of 25 over 72 pi meters per minute, 
But again, in mathematical notation, dhdt has to have the minus sign on it. But when you enter it in English with words, uh, it shouldn't if we use the word decrease. Okay, so that's, uh, that's example five with related rates.